So suppose they told you that the sine of an angle was one half, and you intended on using right triangle trig to find the other five. Okay, sure. Well, if we had something like this, we know that the sine of theta is y over r. All right. So for the sake of right triangle trig, r is our hypotenuse, so it's always going to be positive. So we're going to have a radius of 2 and a y value of minus 1. All right. So if I was going to draw that, my radius is positive and my y is negative. So there are two places where that can happen. All right. Sure. On our unit circle like this. Here this is going to give me a y of minus 1. And this is going to give me a y of minus 1 on our reference triangles. So there's a couple of different places where this can happen. All right, so if that's minus one and this one's two, what's that thing gonna be? Oh, these are right triangles. So I guess you could go and you could find those guys. You could say, you could say, you could say, minus one squared plus, I don't know, squared is two squared. So this is one plus, oh, you don't know say, squared is Four? Sure. So then um, question mark turns out to be, I subtract one, that's three. That's the square root of three. T he, T he. So that one's going to be root three. And this one's going to be root three. So we can see that we need to determine which one of these triangles we're on. Because this is theta and that is also theta in our reference triangles. So let's just say that theta terminates in which quadrant do you want? Do you want the third quadrant or the fourth quadrant? We see we've ruled out the first two because in the first two, our sign is going to be positive. So here our sign is negative. So why don't we just say it terminates in quadrant four? <clears throat> which one of these terminates in quadrant four? If this is my x and this is my y. This one terminates in quadrant four. Okay, so now I'm, I'm focusing on this triangle. So if the sine is one half and theta terminates in quadrant four, then I'm right here, where my x is positive, my y is negative, and then this is my r. So if I'm trying to find the cosine of theta, I know the cosine is my adjacent over my hypotenuse, so my cosine is going to be root 3 over 2. My tangent of theta is going to be the opposite over the adjacent. Does that sound about right? The opposite over the adjacent. Now here I know my triangle isn't in standard position, but my Sokotoa still works. My tangent is my opposite over my adjacent. So that's going to give me a minus 1 over the square root of 3. Most people are going to rationalize that, and they're calling it root 3 over 3 these days, and it's still going to be minus. All right, so we got the sine, the cosine, the tangent, the cosecant. The cosecant is the reciprocal of which one? Is it the reciprocal of the cosine, or is it the reciprocal of the sine? It's the reciprocal of the sine. So you can say that's 1 over a minus 1 half, and then dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying by its reciprocal, and here you get a minus 2. Good times? Good times. What about the cosecant? Ooh, we already got the cosecant. What about the secant? The secant of my angle theta is going to be the reciprocal of the cosine. So then, this guy is going to be 2 over root 3. Tee tee he. Most people rationalize that. Good stuff. Oh, one more. Cotangent. Right. We could take the reciprocal of tangent, or we know the cotangent isn't the adjacent. Uh, isn't the opposite over adjacent. It's the adjacent over the opposite. So here we see the cotangent is going to be root 3 over minus 1, which is root 3. Oh, minus root 3. So here's your five. The one they gave you 
and the five additional give you all six trigonometric functions or the ratio of the sides of right triangles.